World to the West is an RPG that's sure to remind some gamers of The Legend of Zelda top-down series while still providing its own unique cast of characters and personalities. While the game is new to the Switch this week, it's been out on Xbox One, PS4, and PC since May 2017. Let's see if the adventure that this game takes us on is worth the entry fee. World to the West actually takes place within the same universe as Rain Game's previous title, Telsagrad. World to the West stars four main characters, Lumina, the Teslamancer, Terry, the Mindbender, Lord Clonington, the Muscle Man, and lastly, Knaz, the Orphan Boy. These four unlikely heroes are brought together one day when our story's villain takes something from each one of them, seemingly uniting our four protagonists into a crew of playable characters in our story. Each of these characters have their own unique motivations for wanting to stop the villain and bring something special to the table in terms of skills and moves that can help the rest of the team out. It's definitely not the most original story in terms of a team-up narrative, but it's good enough for this game, and I think that's in part to the charming and humorous personalities throughout the game. While the story isn't too unique, each one of these main characters including the cast of NPCs feel like individuals. They may not have voices, but the charm of the characters' personalities shine via the well-written dialogue and cutscenes that play out through the story. Pair all of this with the very cute and adorable chibi-like art style of the game and you have a game that despite having a very bare-bones story, is still a pretty entertaining journey. At first glance, World to the West reminded me of Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. Its top-down view with a heavy focus on puzzle solving completely fits the Zelda-like vibe. At the start of World to the West, the game slowly introduces each one of the main four characters as they're slowly drawn together to form their single unit. It was a pretty neatly woven introduction that shows how these characters from different backgrounds and settings all come together as a team. The entire game takes place on this moderately big world that slowly is revealed to the player as you explore with each one of the characters. At the same time, new powers and skills are unlocked by each one of the characters as you play through the game. The game starts to feel more like Zelda or something like Metroidvania as you suddenly are able to go back down paths you visited before but couldn't access because you just didn't have the right skills at your disposal yet. The introduction half of the game has this buildup of the group finally becoming a single unit that doesn't really flesh out though. You see, even though the meeting of the characters is built up nicely, they never really feel like a unit because you don't control all of them as one. Scattered throughout the game are these totem pools that act as save points, character switch points, and fast travel spots. You'll come to love these as you constantly need to come to these spots to switch between different characters. That will also be a major part of the game that at times can be fun and also annoying. It's fun when you finally obtain the skill for a character to unlock that mystery path you've been wondering how to get through and now you can. That sense of finally being able to explore something is really exhilarating, but there's also some chores that come along with it. For example, when you have one team member open up a path with their new skill, usually that means you have to retrace that journey through the same path you just went on with the rest of the characters. Since this game doesn't let you control all of them as a single unit, that means having to travel through the path multiple times with multiple characters. It can be a real downer for the exploration if there isn't a totem pole to fast travel to. Additionally, when you do have those moments of finally being able to go back and open up a secret passage with your skills, it's hard to actually remember where those spots were in the game because there isn't some sort of marker system for the map. It's little situations like that that I think could be improved with some slight changes to the gameplay. The rest of the game is pretty linear for the most part, and you never feel like you get lost trying to solve something. Each of the character introductions and the sections afterward are split up into chapters that in total take about 10 hours to complete the entire game. There are moments of combat where you have to fight some smaller enemies, but it never really felt difficult. Combat boils down to just swinging the attack button when enemies are near you, and the difficulty curve comes in the form of the higher enemy count. That's about it. Ironically, I found that some of the fights against multiple smaller enemies were more difficult than the larger boss fights that were pretty much just a breeze in the park. Now even though I am downplaying the combat here, that's not so much the star of the game's gameplay. That instead would be the puzzles as they're pretty darn fantastic. The puzzle design was clever and oftentimes exhilarating when fused with enemies or things that can kill you, making them much more exciting. Aside from the puzzles, there are collectible scrolls for you to collect, 36 in total, but you don't need all of them to proceed to the final section of the game. These are fun to keep an eye out for and add a sprinkle of diversity to the mostly puzzle-driven gameplay. If you do aim to complete the game with all the scrolls, you can probably extend the gameplay session from 10 hours to more like 13 to 14 hours. World to the West is a very adorable and cute looking game. The entire game has this glow like filter over it that gives the game a warm and happy vibe, even when you're in the caverns of a cave fighting enemies. The small yet chubby looking avatars and NPCs look cuddly and sweet. 
The game looks like it runs at 1080p 60 with a drop to 720p if you pick up the Switch version and play it on the go. I did see a specific slowdown when I first booted up the game on my Switch in donk mode, but after that initial introduction it seemed like it worked fine. The one random issue I noticed were the loading times. Occasionally the game would take a while to load if I entered a new building, but then not as long a second time. So the loading times did vary, sometimes it could be pretty quick, and other times it felt like it dragged on. The music tracks in World to the West are very calm and peaceful. I noticed a lot of instrumentals with a focus on slow piano or guitar playing, and it felt very friendly, fitting to the cute looking visuals on display all the time. I also liked the simple use of sound effects for navigating the terrains, the small pitter patter of the character's steps on hardwood floor or the rocky terrains. I do wish the game had some voice acting attached to the main characters at least though, because the writing for the game is extraordinary. Each of the characters is filled with personality and I think that something should be added to their speech bubbles at least to further add to that charm, whether it's messing around with the font and text of the speech bubbles, like something out of Golf Story, or at least giving them some voices. World to the West was a pretty entertaining puzzle focused game with some added exploration that at times could be tedious because of the separation of the players, yet it still was an enjoyable time. There definitely are things that can be improved like the combat, a marker system for the map, and I would have loved to see some voice acting attached to the main characters. Even then though, I have no problem recommending this game despite my nitpicks. It's still a great time, especially for those of you with fond memories of Link to the Past. It may not be at the same caliber of course, but it definitely scratches that itch. That does it for my review of World to the West for the Nintendo Switch, PS4, Xbox One, and PC. If you have any questions about the game, feel free to ask me in the comments down below, or just hit up my Twitter or Snapchat in the description down below. As always, thank you all very much for watching. If there are any games you want reviewed coming out soon, let me know in the comments down below, and just let me know ahead of their release, not the day before, please, and I'll do my best to get to them. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.